Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. All right, we are here to celebrate, right? Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm Alan Younger, and I'm the director of the Small Business Center at Foresight Tech, and I'm so glad that all of you are here as we celebrate the fourth session of the Launch Challenge. That's where you applause. Mm -hmm. right. For those of you who don't know, almost two years ago, six colleges and universities here in Winston-Salem decided we're going to put our money where our mouth is by supporting entrepreneurs in our community. So our program at Foresight Tech is called the Launch Challenge. And the way that it works is there's a number of people each session of the Launch Challenge, which is twice a year, who commit themselves to do some serious work to start their businesses. They have to attend educational events five times each month. They have to meet with business mentors three times each month. And each week they turn in a progress report saying, here's what I've done recently. Here's what I've done during the past week that's going to help me to launch my new business. They've worked really hard and we're here to celebrate them. Isn't that great? Yeah. So before I recognize our graduates, the first thing I would like to do, they're not in here right now, probably on purpose, but when you get a chance, I want you to celebrate Nell Perry and Della Lawson and our work study student, Olivia. They're all out there making sure that everybody gets in here and, and enjoys themselves. But when you see them, you could either stop and applaud or you can just throw something down and so step over. <laughs> and tell Della and Olivia to peek in too, just so we can celebrate them. They're making sure that people get here. That's right. We want to celebrate you real quick. Thank you. So we're really excited about the Launch Challenge. In addition to the wonderful work that they've done, not just with the program, but all year long with all of the work that we do to support small businesses in our community, we have a wonderful team of business mentors and presenters who have helped people to develop the skills that they need to be successful, and also when they're facing challenges, we help them to overcome those challenges. So that's why we're here. Now let's also celebrate our graduates. I want all the graduates to stand up, and I have something for you, and then please come on up here with, with us so we can take a picture. Shereen, you can go ahead and applaud. <laughs> hey Sandra. Coria, Monica, she's not here, but Taylor Therese as well, Joshua Young. Denise, I've practiced being able to do this with one hand. I want you all to give me a round of applause. <laughs> Dawn and Joshua, Daniel, and Chase Crutchfield isn't here today, but let's give him a round of applause as well. But his wife is here. And if you know anything about marriage, that's even better than him being here. <laughs> Balance. Angela Young is not here, but let's give her a round of applause as well. Ahmad. We are so happy that all of them committed themselves to doing some great work. You all should pull out your pictures because we look good, I mean your cameras, because we look good. <laughs> Foresighttech.edu, and in the search line type launch challenge, you will go to the launch challenge page, and you will see that the new application for the fall session of the launch challenge is live. If you received our newsletter today, you've got a direct link to that application. 
So if you or somebody you know is interested in starting a business and you want our help, we want to help you to do that and participating in the Launch Challenge would be a wonderful, wonderful way to participate, a wonderful way to get that done. So at this point, I'd like to introduce Dr. Alan Murdoch. He is with our Economic and Workforce Development Division at Foresight Tech. Yeah, thank you, Alan. He told me to be two or three minutes, so I wrote a speech that would last about 60 seconds. Yeah. I spent three years in Alabama, so I may, you know, let it lay out a little there, a little bit longer. So, um, well, welcome. You know, on behalf of Dr. Uh, Janet Spriggs, president of Forsyth Tech, little mayor, um, and welcome to the launch challenge. And this is the fourth, or third, yeah. fourth, fourth launch challenge, right? Um, this is exciting, and, uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, community colleges train a lot of folks, we educate a lot of folks. Very rarely do we take the next step, which is to help them fund their endeavors. So somewhat unheard of, so I'm, I'm glad we have a, a piece of this. You know, as a community college, we do a lot of educating entrepreneurs. Sometimes we train entrepreneurs, but they don't even know it. Look at all the trades that we work with across this uh, community. You ever have to call a plumber? All right, an HVAC person? It's all being trained by Versailles Tech. And those folks, after a couple of years of working with somebody, can hang their own shingle. Hopefully they come back to the Small Business Center, where's Alan Younger, and Alan Younger can help them out with some of his free classes. Mm -hmm. How about our IT folks? All the cybersecurity stuff, that's a huge, huge area in the near future. So all those IT folks we're training. Again, entrepreneurs, we need to be helping them out. And of course, Alan and his small business center, how many hundreds of people come through here every year? We just we just ran a report on okay. someone this year, I think it was Del Hill. Okay, okay. It was more than four hundred distinct people who came here. Many of them multiple times. Perfect, perfect. So four hundred folks that are thinking about smarting starting a small business and coming to us for some help. That's awesome, that's awesome. So, um, I told you this to be short, so I wanna thank a few folks before we move on. The one, pulling all this together, Alan Younger. Give him a round <laughs> takes a lot of work and takes a lot of fast talking sometimes because um, a lot of people that are helping with this are volunteers. So who are the counselors? You know, I met one of the, uh, Counselors, so these folks are volunteering their time. Are we paying them? We're not paying them. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> so they're volunteering their time and their expertise, and we're learning from their errors, from the from their headaches from last year. We're learning from those. And that's awesome. So thank you to them. Who else are we thanking out here? Judges. Where are our judges? Front or the whole front? Oh, a lot of judges. Wow. All right. Good. Well, thank you, folks. We're not paying them either, are they? No, perfect, perfect. <laughs> but again, the judges have to come here, listen to your spiels, get a feel for what you're doing, and then make some really difficult decisions at the end. At the end of the day, that we're going to give away some money today. Hopefully around, do we have a number? $50,000. So $50,000 will leave this room today, some way, shape, or form, or another. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. And, <laughs> and the last group I need to uh, thank um, are the applicants. You guys had to what? Well, had to meet with Alan. Right? <laughs> and fill out an application. We probably made you take some classes. You probably went to some seminars. You probably did a lot of one on one counseling. You put some time and effort into this. And it comes down to what is it? Maybe what? Second. May 2nd. It's a big day for you guys. Step up to the plate and hit a home run. Back to you. Thank you very much, Alan. Many of you have. I hope enjoyed what's been on the screen. We have a lot of people that we've worked with and Della and Nell captured a lot of the testimonials and success stories about them. We're gonna leave this up just a few more minutes, but you'll probably see some people that you, that you know. It may be moving kind of quickly, but hopefully you can capture some of the ways that we've supported their businesses and helped them to be successful. Now I'd like to introduce Alan Joins to come here. And when he come, while he's coming, let me tell you, the reason why he's here is because a big part of his role as mayor is to promote economic development, and entrepreneurship is one of the ways that we accomplish that. Thank you, Alan. So Alan puts me in front of y'all getting money. So. <laughs> Seriously, I, I did want to be here today. 
for a number of reasons. First of all, as Alan mentioned, the development of small businesses is one of the integral parts of rebuilding our economy here. And you know, we talk with you some fancy words sometimes about creating an entrepreneurial ecosystem. Well, the road back there is the ecosystem. These are the folks who are really going to make our city better, going to help grow jobs and help make our economy strong. So I've been here to congratulate you. I want to thank all the mentors and the judges and everybody who helped make it happen, Alan. Thank you. Congratulations to you and to Presi Tech, who has always been a huge supporter of a small business development. You know, small business uh, will make up small and mid-sized businesses will make up about 80% of all the new jobs created here in our community over the future here. And so this is key that we make sure we have a very strong and viable uh, system here. So thank you all very much. Congratulations to all the, the winters and all the hard work that you have put forth. And uh, take that 50,000 and put it to good use. Well, congratulations. So sometimes it's okay to be fired. Got your attention, right? right? So, during the first session of the launch challenge, I was the MC. I thought I was pretty good, too. And then some people told me that I wasn't. <laughs> but that's all good. It's all good. I'm not upset about that. So, Angela Wilder was our MC for the second and third sessions of the launch challenge. And about a month ago, we had a session at the Small Business Center focusing on public speaking and presentations and IVG was our presenter. So my pr the person who took my spot, Angela Wilder said, that's who should MC the next showcase. So we're very pleased to introduce you to IVG. IVG <laughs> is an awesome presenter of ourselves. IVG has met many of the people who are in the launch challenge now. And when we did her session about a month ago, I couldn't get out of the room before I had emails from people saying, please bring her back. So the next time I saw her, I said, will you please come back on May 2nd? And I got her. <laughs> so what she's going to do is, will you go ahead and clap? She's awesome. <laughs> so she's going to lead us through the next session within the showcase, and that is to hear the presentations from the finalists. Thank you for that introduction, Alan. You're fantastic in my book. I, I don't know about all the rest of them, but you're fantastic. Um, number one, thank you so very much for allowing me back in your space. It's Thankful Thursday, so let's give some thanks to ourselves, right? So yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. yeah, I know that we've been giving a lot of thanks to the people who have made this day happen, the people who have participated how about giving a round of applause for the people who are in the background back there, those folks who are here, who support you, who are making sure that you have everything you need as you are on this journey to success. So um, as Alan said before, my name is Ivy G. I am the small business owner of the Hospitality G, where I motivate hospitable behavior in the workplace, okay? Not only that, I give good energy. I hope so. You can give me a round of applause if you think so. All right. So um, I, I, I picked up on a lot of key words, and I think that support, having support not only from the people who love you, but having support from a community who wants to be there for you is the best thing in the world. So I think that everybody's in good hands, and it's enough about me. Let's start moving towards what you came here for, right? So we're going to have our finalists, as we said before, come up. They're going to present for about five minutes, okay? And then we're going to open up the floor for the next five minutes to have some questions, okay? We really like to make sure that you're questioning these panelists or these finalists about the things that they are communicating about, okay? Giving them everything that they need to make sure that they feel uh, honored the same way that they make me feel so welcome. So without further ado, we're going to have Case Sandra Vess come on down here.
25% of them will see their first signs of hair loss. And by the time they reach age 50, 85% will see hair loss, significant amount of hair loss. And women, we are not out of the woods. By the time we turn fabulous 50, 40% of us will have experienced or will be dealing with some degree of pattern hair loss. And our children, 3% of them will also experience some type of hair loss um, situation. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kay Sandra Best. I am, um, my, the name of my company is called Best You by Kay Sandra. It's non-surgical hair replacement salon. So I am a stylist and I specialize in non-surgical hair replacement. And what that is, is I am able to restore your crown and glory by giving you your hair back. Um, I am able to customize a head of hair for you that matches your density, your color, and your texture, giving you an instant beautiful head of hair. Now some people may not care about losing their hair, but I can tell you who does. The little girl that gets bullied at school because she has alopecia, she cares. The lady who is depressed because her husband left her when she developed an autoimmune, uh, autoimmune disease and lost her hair. She cares. And what about the young man who lives in his RV who is ashamed of his male pattern baldness, which is a genetic disorder? He's scared to settle anywhere because he is ashamed. He doesn't want to build relationships. And I care. I care about helping you give you your hair back, make you feel good about yourself. I am honest, you can trust me, I'm empathetic. If you're crying, trust and believe I'm crying too. <laughs> I am crying as well. So I will also give you a relaxed atmosphere and once that's all said and done, I'm not gonna break your pockets. I'm very affordable. And so the first year, I plan to grow 15 customers in the first year up to 25 in year by year five. My revenue grows from 52,000 in one year and 138,000 by year five. My net profit grows from 4,000 to 43,000. This does include my salary that's included in the labor and expense of this income statement. In the event that I do not win funding, I'll have a very quick payback in 1.9 years. My breakdown, my break-even revenue is forty thousand, and that's with approximately six clients. Anything above that level, I earn profit. I was able to go ahead and open the doors to my salon April the eighth because of the small business center. They have helped me gain confidence. Their educational events, I've learned so much. The mentors are absolutely awesome, and they have given me the support system that I never thought I would have. What I plan to do after the launch challenge is continue to go to um, educational events and I want to make America smile again by giving them their hair back. <laughs> um, the way that I will use my grant money is for equipment, my business startup package, my products, and I would like to ask for six months of salon suite rent, which is the biggest, my biggest expense that will help me concentrate on building my clientele and paying for um, you know, ways to, to build. And I would like to start a charitable mission for children in need with a total of $11,000. I am Kay Sandra Best, Best You by Kay Sandra. Oh. judges, I'm sorry, four questions, and I have a microphone here for you, and I see a hand up already, so I'm going to let you go ahead and start it. Hi, Cassandra. Hey. Who are your competitors, and how do you differ from them? Uh, well, the only competitor that I have is, um, um, Lord, I forgot their name. That's how much they were. Okay, so hair clubs are men. 
Hair Club for Men, I used to work for them actually. And um, the way that I compare to them, because I am a small business and because I do care, and I'm not a corporate, so I'm not all about the money. I really care about helping people. I just want to make sure that we heard you correctly say that there is no competition. There is none. There is no competition. Um, Arena. Hey, here's Andrew. When you were talking about your financials, you said something happens in 1.9 years. Can you expound on that? Something yeah, about if you my, don't um, get the grant money. The payback. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you say the payback, you mean payback for what does that mean? <coughs> Profitable payback. Like, I mean, I will be able to between year one and two, I'll be able to pay back the starter expenses. Yeah. Thank you for that question. Um, good to see you again. Um, what are your plans after um, next steps after the launch challenge? So my next steps are to keep pushing, keep coming to the Small Business Center, because like I said before, they are my support system. And to keep just keep pushing. I have to keep pushing. I can't stop. And I need the small business center because I don't I don't have any other support outside of here. So just growing my business, growing my clientele. You said you're gonna be pushing by um, making America smile again yes. one head at a time. One scalp at a time. I hear you girl. Yes. One head of hair at a time. Uh, Cassandra, why were you looking at me when you were talking about ball <laughs> Really rude. <laughs> Cassandra, tell us how you're going to get customers, please. Um, well, right now, social media and word of mouth. Um, I'm working on my marketing only because it's such a touchy subject. Um, passing out cards and actually having a conversation in front of a lot of people kind of veers them away, you know, from the from wanting to do business because they don't want anybody to know. So right now, it's kind of word of mouth social media what I heard is that if you all aren't following her follow her and share her posts and let people know about her okay Sandra great presentation what is the difference um, between what you do um, and not um, revealing any trade secrets but what's the difference between what you do and people who shops who do weaves okay well first of all weaves are the reason one of the reasons why I do what I do because they allow your hair to come out if they're not done correctly and what I do is I customize a head of hair that fits your existing hair and it contours to your head so it's all you don't have to go into a wig store and stand there for 30 minutes trying to figure out which wig is going to match my hair because I will customize hair for you that matches your existing hair. So that, that makes the difference, yeah. So is it weaves or is that hair implants hair replacement? Let me, let, implant before you answer that, let's make sure that everybody heard that. Is it wigs or is it hair implant hair replacement? It's not hair implants. Implants is surgery, so it's non-surgical. And it is a piece of um, human hair, kind of like on a, on a netting, like on a really fine lace that contours to fit your head. So it's not a wig, it doesn't have clips in it, it doesn't have the um, tuck combs and all of that kind of stuff. It, and you're able to do every activity, swim, it doesn't come off until you take it off. So you can swim, you can exercise, you can do everything that you would normally do in your everyday life. That was a good question. You said you're a licensed cosmetologist. cosmetologist. Is this a faction of your business or is this a totally new business where you're, you're building? And part two of my question is about the numbers. Is that a faction of the business or is it in addition to what you currently do as a stylist? Okay, so I've been a, a licensed stylist for 25 years and I've solely concentrated on just regular hair. So this business I'm solely concentrating on non-surgical hair replacement. I do still have clients that just will not let me go that I have to do their hair, so I still do those clients. Um, but I've never had my own, sorry, I've never had my own salon or anything like that, so this is, everything is new to me. 
Thank you so very much. I'll give her another round of applause. Good questions, good answers. We're going to keep this good thing moving. How about that? Y'all okay with that? Yeah. I'm not going to make you clap until I call Daniel Foster up to the stage next. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Thank y'all for coming out. I've got a couple of quick questions to ask y'all. By a show of hands in here, who owns a car or truck? Okay. By a show of hands in here, who has ever needed car repairs done? All right. By a show of hands, who loves taking the car to the dealership to get fixed? Nobody. <laughs> if you want a friend in the business, someone you can trust, someone who's passionate about what they do, someone who cares about the community, this is what I plan on doing. It's going to be Foster's Auto Care. We're going to be located here in the Triad area. I'm currently talking to two commercial realtors about two possible locations in um, Peters, Creek, uh, Peters Creek Parkway and South Creek Parkway. Uh, we plan on opening up in June or July. We're going to be a uh, family owned and uh, operated brand business. We're going to specialize in Toyota and the Hondas, but we're going to still service all makes and models. We're going to service hybrids and electric vehicles. We're going to have a DIY space with do it yourself or sort of hobbyists. They can come in and rent the bay, they can rent specialized tools. If they need technical support by a technician, we offer that. And if they get so frustrated they can't finish a job, we'll finish a job for them. <laughs> we'll offer them free fluid disposal, all in a safe, clean work atmosphere. I'm also going to have a mobile business. Mobile business is going to be geared towards people that might be, might be able to afford a tow truck to get the car towed to a shop. People that might not want to leave the comfort of the home to come and wait at the shop to get the car fixed or repaired. Or people that just got to go to work and don't got time. So we can go to the job or the home and do on-site repairs there for them. Also going to offer a community care program. It's going to be geared towards uh, low-income families. That's where they'll receive a uh, discount on labor and parts. A little bit about myself, I've been in the automotive industry now for about 10 years. Uh, some of my certifications, I'm a uh, T10 Toyota graduate from Foresight Tech. Woo! I am Toyota certified. Uh, I'm an ASC certified technician. Uh, I've got my MAX uh, AC refrigerant certification. I am licensed by the state of North Carolina for state inspections. This is my financial projection for the next three years. I know roughly I'm going to have to take anywhere between five and six thousand dollars per week to cover all expenses. And if I was to win the competition, I would uh, be asking for about twenty-five thousand uh, dollars for a startup capital, office, shop equipment, uh, first month's rent, marketing, and some customer accommodations. I would like to also thank the Small Business Center for all the education and support they have uh, provided to me uh, for some of the resources for transitional income. Uh, the mentorship is great. You guys got a bunch of great ideas and a lot of great positive feedback uh, along with all the education. Uh, the mentoring has always been like a key point that's uh, really helped out the businesses. Uh, friendly atmosphere for us networking goes, building relationships with customers. It's always a plus. This is going to be me and my family's livelihood. Uh, so our long-term goal is to become a million-dollar business. So with y'all's help and support and y'all's vote, we can make this happen. Thank y'all. Already, as the community is given to him. So, can I give you, give it up one more time for Daniel, please? Yes, 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 fantastic. I'm 
opening up the floor to the judges, and I have my first question. Daniel, can you explain more about what you're going to do with the community care program? How are you going to make that happen? Yeah, I want to talk to uh, your partnership. I want to get a partnership up with the social service department. And uh, basically, uh, if you're on any type of government assistance, Section 8, food stamps, Social Security, disability, um, those participants right there will qualify for this low income program. Great question. What's your projected start date and who are your competitors? I have no competitors. Uh, my projected start date is in June or July. Because um, my shop's unique. Uh, no other shops around here offer a mobile service or a uh, DIY space. Right, I was getting ready to say that. I don't think I've ever heard of a do-it-yourself <laughs> space. Like, this is fantastic. Yeah. Great question. You had that question too? He said, ain't no competition, baby. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no competition. <laughs> All right. Daniel, great presentation Thank you. as well. Um, so with your do-it-yourself space, yes. what kind of liability are you taking on? Because you could have somebody like me come in and like, really well, mess up some stuff. We would uh, set, the, set the car up on a lift for you. Uh, that would be our job, setting the car up on a lift for you, so it wouldn't be no liability as far as that. But most people that's uh, do-it-yourselfers, they'll have a general automotive knowledge but we would be there for your support or educational needs if you need to be. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. We're gonna keep the questions coming. Daniel, you said this is a family-owned business. Would you talk to us about who else in your family is involved? Yes, it's uh, my wife. Um, That's okay, it's all right. We my, wife. Keep going. my wife, uh, she's gonna be the office manager. She's gonna uh, run the front end, set appointments, uh, work that part of the office uh, myself. I'm still going to be in the shop working as a technician. And so that's uh, our two uh, family components. Is that, is that enough? Do you need team? We're going to scale the growth as um, the business grows. Technicians. Yeah, technicians. Started talking about family and got excited. There ain't nothing wrong with that. I hear you. You just want to know who was involved. That's fantastic. We got more questions coming. Hi. Hello. What are your next steps? To the launch down? Uh, well, I'm planning on getting the business running in June or July, and I'm going to be uh, pushing the marketing heavy on that. Um, I'm going to be doing radio ads, social media. Um, for the DIYers, uh, I'm going to be uh, targeting all the auto parts stores because that's where all the DIYers go for the parts. Mm -hmm. And um, getting together with social services and getting that community uh, care program started networking I had another question I believe yes okay perfect yeah great job uh, can we go back to your numbers page your financial yeah. page? I'm slow and you kind of want to that so question number one is how will you use the money I'll be using the money for a uh, startup capital for the rent uh, I've been having a hard problem, a uh, hard time trying to find a shop that's already got equipment in it. That'd be ideal, but um, all the shops and finance is already bare, so I'm going to supply lifts, air compressor, airlines, stuff like that. Uh, myself, I've already got um, my tools. Um, Going to be uh, using the money for marketing and general customer accommodations. Gotcha. And so, um, with Ms. And you have a unique services that you'll be offering. So you're, if nobody else around here is doing that, so you'll be the only person that is doing that. But if you look at general shops, right, automotive shops, um, your margins are, are, and your projected margins are, are pretty high, pretty strong, you know, close to 30%. Is that normal in that industry? Well, I'm going to be basing that off of uh, the additional income that's going to be coming from uh, the do wide the DIYers and uh, the mobile business and uh, low income uh, care, uh, community care uh, program I'm going to be doing also. So that's uh, all additional income coming in. But uh, generally, uh, automotive shops around here, they'll average anywhere between three and $5,000 a week or more. 
Net. Yeah. Great questions. Look at y'all. Y'all are doing perfect, and I'm sorry that timer means that that was it. Like that was so fantastic. Let's give another round of applause. Thank you.
for another round of applause. That was great. I'm going to open up the floor to my judges for questions. I've got a hand up right here. Mike may be going in and out. You might have to use your head. Oh, it's here. our solution is more affordable. A lot of those solutions cost an enormous amount of money. Small businesses, they can't afford them. So our entry level package is like $3,000 for the year. There is no comparison out there. Plus, I have my 20 years certified um, HR experience. I've been there, I've done that. I'm able to implement strategies very, very quickly. So we're offering, we want our small businesses to thrive within our triad community so that they can be better add more profits, increase their employee engagement, as well as providing more jobs for our community. Great. I got a couple more questions here. Hi. Right, great job. Thank How you. will people pay you? How will people pay you? Well, there'll be financing, of course. Go to the pay direct. Now, I would leave check. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me ask it's, a better it's question. An is it a, Okay. Thank you. Okay. So if they need financing, we'll work that out. Okay. But it's an annual subscription? An annual subscription. Could they pay monthly if they wanted to pay monthly? Yes. Or, okay. Are you familiar with um, Bamboo HR or Zenefits? Yes, uh, very familiar with that. Okay. So like Bamboo, mm -hmm. they're like 99 bucks a month. You're right. That's what they say. But then when you dig deeper and you see exactly what they have, okay. um, it is more expensive than that a month. And they don't have the certified seasoned HR professional that can help guide them. Gotcha. It's very automated. Okay. Thank you. I've got a question down here on the end. Talk just about customers. Where are you going to get them? Where are we going to get them? Great question. Um, well, we already have about 16, as of last night, we had 16 people that was wanting to look at our product already. This morning, by 11 o'clock, two more. So that's up to 18. Also, I have two speaking engagements already booked with Sherm Chapters. Um, being a certified HR professional myself, I'm dealing with that community, so I'll be tapping into my private and personal network. So what I heard her say, she's going to put herself out there, and if you can take a look at the screen, there's some Facebook, some LinkedIn information right there, so please spread her information as well. That can really help a small business. Hey, so what type of small business are you marketing to? Like, who do you want your customers? Okay, great question. Some of the customers that would work really well for this are automotive companies, uh, the mock tires of the world, the HVAC companies. Um, as it will fit for any, those are the ones we're kind of targeting right now, the trades, because they really don't know what they're doing. In fact, I spoke with a, uh, this week Tuesday, we had a meeting with a business owner, and she's like, you know, Dawn, I'm out of compliance. I know I'm out of compliance. I have this box of stuff sitting here. I know if I get, I'm going to get fined if the DOL comes in. But the way I'm going to deal with it is, I'm not dealing with that. I don't want to think about it. I said, I can help you with that. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes, I have another question. Can you discuss your next steps after the launch? Absolutely. So after the launch, we already are in our next steps. We have our beta that is already in progress. Um, we have uh, several modules of that complete. We have our second company that's getting ready to go on to the beta. And we are meeting with a couple people that are already going to, uh, for, for second, our sales team. So we've identified, we're selecting our, our sales director, and maybe one other salesperson. Um, so we'll be making those final selections, and then that should lay the platform for and, uh, going forward with any customers from August 1st. So we're just in the beta testing, we're fine tuning all the methods. I got time for about a two second question and maybe a five second answer, okay? okay? You and your partner will not be taking salaries for the first two years? The first year, for the first year. So, do you currently work or run another business? I do have another business uh, called Coach Pro for You. However, we've made changes to where I've downsized and I've reduced that down to where we're focused. Can you show me some time? Say it, say it. Oh, 
Okay, so you are going to have a lot of companies' information in your hands. Yeah. It makes me queasy when I think about data breaches. What are you going to do to protect your customers, clients? That is why we need the HIPAA compliance cloud. That protects them solely, and that's probably $10,000 a year. It's $9,600 a Great question. Great presentation, Don. It was fantastic. Y'all give her a round of applause. Giving my judges some time to complete scoring. To get socialized and a lot of education and fellowship so we can break bread together and build the bridges and learn from one another. Uh, the business we will create a job, our business will create jobs which will provide financial stability of, for the women and their families. The community space will also help people learn how to cook healthy Mediterranean food in the cooking classes we will provide. This will allow us to take on more refugee women and help up to 20 more families so they can work and earn money and keep their dignity. Finally, it will build bridges of understanding between neighbors here in West Tennessee. The Small Business Center has increased my knowledge and understanding of what it takes to open and operate a successful business through classes, networking, and mentoring. The mentors were very helpful and encouraged me to keep going. They were very generous in sharing their experience with me, which increased my confidence. I'm planning to um, I'm planning to find the location by September 2019, and we will be open on December 2019. Uh, for my financial projection, in the first year we will show a loss due to opening and equipping the location. The second year we are closer to breaking even, and we will make profit in year three. I'm asking for $40,000 and I will use that money and this grant to rent the space, buying the equipment, for furnishing the for meeting space. My next steps will be looking for space to open the kitchen, buy the equipment and furniture, furniture do a lot of more marketing, more networking, and our space will benefit the whole triad area. We will provide delicious food and financial stability for refugee women and investing in our community and build the bridges. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing that, y'all. Doesn't that sound delicious? Doesn't that sound delicious? Yeah, oh, it is delicious. We hear from the crowd in the back that have already experienced delicious. I love that. Um, so right now, you all know the routine. By now, I'm going to open up the floor to my judges for questions. Yes, sir. Great job. Thank you. You kept saying, I, I like to cook, but you kept saying women, women, women. So that, does that mean um, I can't come in to, to you take your, your services? Okay. Everyone is welcome for coming to okay. classes. Okay, okay, so men are allowed. Yes. Okay, very good, very good. And um, you said you catered over 200 events in the past two years. Like, that's really good. Like, how, so in terms of customer or client acquisition, what are your plans? Uh, like, for our customer, uh, like, we get so many compliments uh, from people who taste our food. They said it's unique and it's different and something they never. Try, try something like that before. Like I said, when we cook, we cook with love, and we put time and effort for for what we are. We love what we are doing, so we are very happy and proud for doing cooking and sharing our food with everyone. It's it's not just food. It's culture. It's food. It brings people together, and um, like we get our customers through a word of mouth and also through um, our Facebook and social media. 
and we try to go to a lot of churches as well to speak and to uh, let them know about our story and why we starting something like that. Because the reason we start that is for women, refugee women coming here, and they don't have uh, any income and they don't have any want to support them, and we we want to stand up and and help them with any way we can. Fantastic, yes. You can clap if you want to. I know you want to. I know you want to. I'm telling you, I can't that for you. Okay? Um, yes, ma'am. Now, I know you have, well, maybe not competition, but if I'm listening right, I think your area that you're going to is building bridges and building a conversation through the means of food. So if you could go into more depth about that to make it different from your competition, because we have a lot of cooking stuff, but what is unique about yours? Um, we, for me, I don't see myself having any competition, because what I'm doing is something no one else starts, because like when we cook, we don't look for um, money coming from cooking. It's bridges and connect people together and let them feel that we are one, fa one big family, and also, like, when we cook, it's um, like sharing that love, sharing, makes these women, refugee women, so proud of what they are doing, confident about themselves, they can start their new life here and be successful, be happy, can raise their kids and take care of them. <coughs> so, um, like, Belly Bridges, like, everyone wants to eat, mm -hmm. and especially if it's a good food, it will bring everyone in one table, and even if some people come together in one table, they don't know each other, it starts the conversation, it start talking, it start learning from about each other, and it start this bonding and friendship, and this is bring all the community together. Fantastic, I got some more questions. So you just said that the focus is not on making money from cooking classes, how is the business sustained? No, it's, it's not like, um, I, I apologize, I didn't make this clear, is that we are looking to make profit. We are looking to uh, be growing and successful and make money, but the fo when we cook, we focus in that we cook to our family, that we cook to our brother and sister and our kids, so it's um, like, Fantastic. Thank you so much for giving us that information. You did fantastic. That's our time. Okay. We're going to keep on moving with our fifth and final finalist. You like that fifth and final finalist? Joshua Young. Did you know 71% of folks that get married or have an event, they kill themselves and they compare it to buying a home or a car. I find that interesting. Hello, my name is Joshua Young, Executive Chef of Superior Catering and Events. My, start, my story starts with something, doing something with nothing. Five years ago, lost my job, didn't, I felt like I had nothing, but I had to pull out of, like you would, a, a trash can, pull my passion out and put it to action. So it brought me to start Superior Catering and Events. Our core competency is catering and event planning. Um, our, our market, uh, our target market is doing, uh, doing catering for corporate and, of course, weddings. We also offer decor and design, also event rental and logistics. Being that one-stop shop for all your catering needs, you sign one contract, you deal with one person, and we handle everything from the beginning to the end. 
making it convenient, affordable, and stress-free. Do you like the way that sounds? Yes. yes. So, well, some of my certification is that I have ACF, and let, let me say this first one. I just realized it. I went to a program that is actually offered through Foresight Tech, and I graduated from Providence Culinary Program. All right. <laughs> So it was almost like three months geared and packed into learning all the honing in things that you need to know as a chef. And then also I am certified for uh, Serve Safe. And then now I'm wearing the badge of ACF, American Federation of Chefs. Right. There are five businesses that I've went, I have been able to work with. Um, they, uh, again, haven't paid me for anything, but they have allowed me to showcase. <laughs> Magdalene, I'm coming. Yeah, come on, so give me some money. <laughs> However, these five, we hope to uh, work with them more in the future. So, here's the magic. We are a competitive edge with when it comes to catering and events. We have one that I found in the area in Greensboro uh, that, um, that is a competitor. However, this is a blank space. This space right here cost our client $350 compared to the norm, which is about 5,000, 4 to 5,000, which knocks people out from uh, getting this right here. So we created. And this is what you have in that same space that I showed you. Reality, we bring the food in, same event. Then we come and we, we dress the place up, giving it a presidential look. And then we have a happy customer here, it's her 50th, uh, birthday, she said, I felt like, watch this, the president's wife. Maybe not this president. <laughs> <laughs> not this good. So we, cre we create pipe and drape. We pipe and drape at Bob 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 uh, Bob Scotia College. We did over 300 feet of material and made this happen for this beautiful bride. And this was her first look at what we've done. This is part of our market validation. Again, a, a soft launch just to see if we can pull off what uh, we are doing. This is a fashion show, this is a church, now this is a venue. It was free, it was free for them. And then here, food! Wow. This is what we're all about, <laughs> creating that experience. And so our market validation, from five months, five weeks, we have went from zero to $14,000 in market validation. And with those contract signed, we still have about three, uh, two uh, uh, alpha bid right now. So our financials, we are honing in on our large events to uh, do, we want to maximize our assumption is to do 18 and go to 32. Then uh, on our revenue profit, we want to go to uh, from 8,000 to about $42,000. And then our break even uh, is about, on the left axis is about $127,000, okay? And then and within a year, we hope to do that. What I'm requesting is $35,000 to help reduce our variable costs for pipe and drape, as you've seen in, the, in, in, the, uh, in, in our, our picture, and then also catering, uh, other, other things that we may need. And then the big one is the fixed cost, to reduce the fixed cost of rent and commissary for at least six months. And then, of course, uh, SUV and a, and a trailer, so we don't have to rent those things so we can get to our, our, our customers as quick as possible. Uh, I'm Joshua Young, Superior Canada Mix. Want to give you this experience here. Thank you so much. Y'all can keep clapping if you want to. No. All right, that was a fantastic presentation. Great energy. Let me open the floor to my judges. Who has questions? Um, you didn't talk about your um, competitors. Who are your competitors? Well, I touched lightly on the competitors, which I said was Vision Catering out of Greensboro. I found out through our market research that a lot of people don't know about them. But what differs us from them is that a, a lot of their um, vendors are high-priced vendors. We're coming, giving you a blank space, and we're making it happen affordable and making your dreams come true. Josh, great job on the presentation. You've obviously created a really strong brand, and I was just wondering if you could expand a little more on your marketing plan and client 
Our business plan, what had worked for us phenomenally because of the Small Business Center, is that our marketing ambassador, which she is not getting paid, but she is doing a great job, I get compliments like saying, Chef, when I wake up in the morning, which is crazy, which seems crazy and weird, but when I get up in the morning, you're the first praise that I see. When I walk the streets of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, without my chef jacket on, people recognize who we are, and because of the market validation, we are making some great results and looking forward to push forward. All right. <laughs> question for you. Yes. What are your next steps after the launch down? Next step, I'm glad you asked. I felt like it was going to come up. <laughs> <laughs> we have two, I've, I've, I've done a lot of uh, sampling here in Winston. Some of you, raise your hand if you know about the Superior Southern Bike. Yep. Collard greens, mac and cheese, yeah. <laughs> chicken, uh, Chicken barbecue, yes, queso fresco wrapped into a dumpling one bite, say, mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Then I have my grandmother's sweet potato pie bite that we have not even touched on, and we plan on to hopefully launch these inside of the brand of Superior Catering and, uh, and make this available into your, into your stores. I got to touch on the fact that he said brandy. I spilled the water on myself. Okay, this time it's my fault. First time. And Josh, going back to your numbers a little yeah. bit, uh, t tell us what an average event is worth to you in terms of dollars and cents. Well, we are trying. We are trying, and our, our goal is to, to go after large events. Uh, we want at least ten thousand dollars when we come to talking about a one-stop shop. That's just at the beginning. But hopefully we are, again, this is a great question because we want to reduce, let me explain why, why we're there, reducing our variable and fixed costs. What we're doing right now is we're renting a lot of this stuff. So in our bottom line of our net profit, it is killing us to a point, even, even launching. But hopefully when we leave here, we're able to walk away and be able to reduce that and be able to give more and more to you and make it affordable. Well, do we have any other questions? Well, I mean, no. If there if there are no more questions, can we just talk about Jesse May's sweet potato pie? <laughs> no, no, I'm messing y'all. Give it up for Joshua, please. please give it up. Such a powerful, such a great conversation or presentation right there, y'all. Um, give it up for all of our finalists. bit about the dedication, about the hard work, about the commitment. Did y'all see that? Yeah, yeah did y'all feel that? Yeah. I kind of want to taste that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, so right now we're going to take just a couple of moments of a break. This break. Third place. Congratulations, Joshua Young. Second place, congratulations, Daniel Foster. And that means congratulations to Dawn. You all will be getting, a, like I mentioned yesterday in our meeting, you all will be getting an email from me within the next week giving you instructions on what's next. And if you don't hear from me, find me. All right, thank you all very much for being here. It's time to get up and take a bunch of pictures with these wonderful folks.